Hi everyone, this is Dr. Pradeep Patel, and today we are going to talk about anatomy. Anatomy is one of the most important and crucial subject for NEET MDS preparation, and it's also a volatile subject. So, in today's video, we are going to talk about from where to learn anatomy, the books and the reference material you should use, the top most important topics, and the tips and tricks that you should employ to learn anatomy the right way. Okay, so without wasting any time, let's begin. Uh, anatomy is an important subject and many questions are asked from it in the NEET MDS like at least 10 to 14. It also forms the base for subjects like oral surgery and general surgery so you should study it properly. It's a volatile subject so you have to give a lot of time to it. Okay moving on to the content from where you should read it. Okay I referred BD Choras here during my MDS preparation and Nafise Faruqi, Nafise Faruqi for osteology. During my UG time, I referred MK Anand. I think nerves and vessels are given it in it properly. There are flow charts and diagrams for, for you to learn, so you can refer that. And uh, Halim was also a good book. High-end books like Gray's Anatomy and Cunningham, you can refer them in the UG time because you have a lot of time. But during the preparation for MDS, uh, I think you should refer the smaller books like BD Chorasia because you don't have a lot of time and you have multiple subjects to learn so you should refer the normal ones okay moving on to the important topics first and foremost scalp uh, it's a topic that everyone remembers so the most important parts of our it are you should remember the parts arteries what are the arteries that are supplying the scalp veins and the lymphatic drainage i think you can avoid the lymphatic drainage but you should remember arteries and veins at least Okay, moving on to the facial muscle part. The attachment and insertion of all the muscles and from which arch the muscles derive, you should remember that. Functions. Functions is the most important part of it. Like buccinator is a whistling muscle, smiling muscle are zygomaticus major, doubt muscles are mentalis. So you should remember that. Lymphatic drainage of the face, very important. You should know where the, where the lymph nodes are draining. Facial artery. Facial artery is one of the most important topic. You should remember that. Okay. Moving on to the side of the neck. There are triangles. You, you all know. So in triangles, you should remember contents of the carotid sheet, SCM. In the posterior triangle, you should remember the boundaries and the contents. Anterior triangle, same boundaries and the contents. Ansar cervicalis and carotid sinus and body. Nerve supply. That is the glossopharyngeal and the vagus. Okay. Moving on. Muscles, muscles of mastication, it's, it's a very important topic. You should know the origin and the insertion and the nerve supply. And in, in most of the muscles, in whatever muscle you encounter in the whole of the anatomy, you should remember the arch of development, attachment, nerve supply, and the function or structures that are passing through them. Okay, moving on to the gland. The mo uh, one of the most important gland is the parotid gland. You should know the structures piercing it, structures that are inside it, in the parotid and yeah, parotid duct. You should know what structures the parotid duct is piercing, what is the length, like uh, it pierces the buccal pad of fat, buccopharyngeal fascia, and the buccinator. You should also remember the nerve supply and facial nerve, nerve that traverses the parotid gland. Okay, moving on, TMG. In TMG, you should know arterial supply and the nerve supply. Why you should know this? Because there are clinical questions like a patient uh, gets a trauma and the TMJ is damaged. So what kind of artery is damaged? What kind of nerve is damaged? They ask these type of questions. So you should remember that TMJ has the supply of artery. This artery supplies or this nerve supplies. Okay. Moving on. Thyroid gland. For thyroid gland, you should know development from where it develops. Artery. There are multiple arteries. You should remember. Nerve supply. Venous drainage. You, these three things you should know. Submandibular gland, the same. Sublingual gland, the same. Yeah, oh, and for the salivary glands, you should know where the duct opens in the oral cavity. You should remember that. They ask the questions a lot, and where the cellulites are formed, you should know that. Okay, moving on. In the cranial cavity, you should know the venous sinuses. They are paired, unpaired, what kind of them. In cavernous sinus, you should know relations, contents. Tributaries and communication. Tributaries and communications are important. They, they are quite frank, quite frequently asked. So you should know that. Okay, moving on. Orbits. Orbit. 
contents you should know uh, what are the nerves and the vessels that are present in the orbit muscles uh, i think you can skip the attachment of the muscles but you should know the function and the nerve supply the a simple code is lr6 so4 rest are supplied by the three that is the lateral rectus is supplied by the abducens superior oblique is supplied by the trochlear and rest three are supp supplied by the oculomotor nerve arterial supply and uh, venous supply you should know this you can skip the muscles uh, you you can skip the attachments and origin of the muscle that's it for mouth okay for mouth the palate soft palate is very important pharynx is very important these two topics are a lot important than the other topic because they are more frequently asked you can check the pyqs and you can see that these are asked quite frequently okay for soft palate you should know the muscle the attachments and the nerve supply and a very important topic is the paswan switch and the fascial pillars the anterior fascial pillars and the posterior fascial pillars you should know that from where they arise what are their functions and what are the nerve supply of it for pharynx the valdeus rings is very important tonsil ton, tonsil is a very important topic you should know its nerve supply its uh, venous and arterial uh, drainage and uh, the lymphatic drainage you should also know the layers of the tonsillar bed because there are questions asking Uh, if there is a tonsillectomy and the tonsillar bed is damaged so what nerve is damaged they ask that the glossopharyngeal nerve is damaged there okay in pharynx the muscle attachment you should know nerve supply insertion and origin all the muscles you should know insertion insertion and origin okay here in the pharynx there is one more thing structures passing between the muscles okay you will see superior constrictor middle constrictor and inferior constrictor so between superior and middle there are nerves and vessels passing between middle and middle and inferior there are vessels and nerves passing so you should know that okay moving on to the nose the paranasal sinuses are very important artery and nerve supply of the septum and the lateral wall this is the most important topic you can skip other parts of the nose but you have to learn the arteries and the nerve supply of the lateral part of the nose and the septum you have to remember that they ask like the what is the kieselbach plexus they ask the spino palatine artery forms it it's the little area or the bleeding area now that is the, this part anterior antero inferior part that is this part they ask this so okay in nose the the opening of the paranasal sinuses it's a very important topic that like you should know which sinus opens where inferior meter sub middle meter superior meter you should know that moving on larynx you should know the cartilages of the larynx they are paired or unpaired you should remember that functions functions uh, yeah functions of the muscles whether they are doing abduction adduction or tensing the vocal cords like cricothyroid tenses the vocal cords you should remember that they are also known as the tuning forks of the larynx you should know that nerve supply nerve supply sensory and motor both very important there are lot of questions they ask like uh, internal laryngeal nerve is damaged on the right side what will be the what will be the, how will be the function of the larynx be affected they ask questions like this or both the both the external laryngeal nerves are damaged so what will be the effect on the larynx they ask question like this so you should know that and shape of the vocal cords during different functions uh, you should remember that moving on tongue tang is a important topic you should know the at least the intrinsic muscle extrinsic muscle what are their functions and the nerves nerve supply papilla you should remember what are the nerve supply of the various papilla and what papilla have the taste buds okay muscle insertion you should remember arterial supply structures okay what important topic is they are structure above and below the hypoglossal muscles you should remember that the, there is a chart I, i'll i'll just put it on the video you can see that and the lymphatic drainage where the tip of the tongue drains where the middle part of the tongue drains where the posterior most part of the tongue drains you should know that and the jugular homo homohyoid uh, lymph nodes are the lymph nodes of the tongue you should remember that okay okay a separate topic that they like to ask is the structure passing through the diaphragm and the lobes of the liver or the lobes of the lungs they they ask that they ask the lord so you should remember that okay Uh, and uh, ganglions ganglions okay there are four important ganglions we all have read them and you should remember these the sensory supply the motor supply the sensory and the motor supply you should remember that like the otic ganglion submandibular ciliary and the pterygopalatine ganglion you should remember that them easily they ask them a lot 
and you should know where they are functionally attached or where they are anatomically attached you, you should remember that joints for the joints they ask the cervical joints okay you have to remember c1 to c7 what are the shapes of various shapes of them and what are the typical what are the atypical vertebrae you have to remember like c1 c2 and c7 are the atypical one and c3 4 5 6 are the typical one so you should remember the shapes of them and what are the various features of them for the joints you have to remember the occipital atlas and axis joint how they move the neck and what joint is between them for arteries there are some important arteries you have to remember for example the external carotid artery you have to remember the various parts of the parts of it anterior parts posterior part medial part and the terminal branches you have to remember them and uh, what what these parts supply or what arteries they form for example the maxillary artery is branch of the external carotid artery you have to remember the parts of the maxillary artery also arch of aorta you have to remember the arch of aorta the various uh, parts of the arch of aorta what arteries they form internal carotid artery very important you have to remember all the four parts what are the vessels they give off and subclavian artery you have to remember now come to veins in veins we have to remember internal jugular vein it's a very important it's quite frequently asked so you have to remember and in the veins the veins of the face it forms a w like pattern you have to remember what are the what is the venous drainage of the face you have to remember that. in the nerves you have to rem remember all the cranial nerves the sequence and which are the sensory which are the motor which are the mix you have to remember and from where they arise okay you have to remember that then moving on you have to remember the trigeminal nerve ophthalmic maxillary mandibula all the parts the vagus nerve very important you have to learn because it comes in the larynx part Lots of angels, same, and the facial nerve. Facial nerve is also an important one. Clinical questions are asked, like where, where along the facial nerve, where is the lesion? So what part will be affected? The questions like these are asked. So you have to learn the facial nerve also. Moving on. Yeah, moving on to moving on to osteology. Okay, osteology is a part that is not so much asked, but but they sometimes ask. Like what is the uh, foramen? What is this foramen? What structure passes through it? Questions like these are asked, or the growth of the bone. Uh, questions like these are so you have to remember the bones of the skull, sutures of the skull. What is the type of suture? You have to remember that. Serrate, lambdoid. What type? What is the type of suture? You have to remember that. Okay. Various foramen that are present uh, in all the aspects of the skull. If you have, if if you are seeing from the foramen say from uh, base part you can see foramen lateral okay normal lateralis if you are seeing the skull from the side you have to remember what are the foramen present there for example oval spinosum lacerum jugular you have to know what are the what are the structures and the vessels passing through these foramen you have to remember they like asking these questions and you have to remember that okay moving on you have to remember the points like terion degma lambda what is the time when these joints open or they fuse? You have to remember that. For the paranasal sinus, you have to remember the development. If they are paired or multiple, the nerve supply and the openings, you have to remember that. Shapes I have already told of the C1, C2, C7, you have to remember there are various shapes of them, or different shapes of them. So you have to remember, just look at the diagram. For anatomy, it's very crucial you look at as many diagrams as you can because only then you can remember and you can form relations and you can do a conceptual reading only if you are going to mug it up you won't remember more than a week that so i advise you to open the book and look at the diagrams okay moving on okay let's focus on the important points what you have to actually focus i have told you the contents i have told you the books from where you can refer now i am going to tell you what is the most important thing you should do first of all Use the diagrams for a better understanding of the topics. If you are not able to understand it, open the diagrams. If you are not able to understand it from the diagrams, just download an app. I'll put up a link or the image. Okay, I used to use this app on my tab and it's a good app. It gives a 3D diagram so you can use that. Open the book. 
whenever in doubt whenever you think that the options here are different or the question here is wrong just open the book clarify your doubts you can get at least 99% of doubt clears by opening the book so you should open the book okay moving on mnemonics you have to use a lot of mnemonics anatomy is not easy anatomy is a volatile subject you will forget it so you use mnemonics there are a lot of mnemonics and i'll try to show as many of them during the topics i shown so use mnemonics last and uh, not the least revision revision is a must if you're not revising anatomy like in every one month you will uh, forget it very easily so you have to re revise it revise it a lot and anatomy is a easy scoring subject it's volatile it's tough but still it's easy because uh, sure shot question comes only one or two are clinical subjects rest are just sure shot they will ask what nerve supply is it what vessel is there they ask questions like that so you can do it use charts for better understanding make charts make charts like uh, in various muscle supply like uh, only one nerve is supplied then there is a separate nerve supplying the same muscle so you can use charts like this muscle supplies all the, uh, this nerve supplies all the muscles and then only one muscle is supplied by the separate separate nerve so you can charts make exception charts like that and that will help you remember more yeah okay i think anatomy is a crucial subject and you should put your focus and time to it you will get the most out out of it they ask pretty easy questions for it only one or two clinical ones so you can put the time and you will get the result out of it okay so whatever your doubts are you can put it down in the comments and i'll try to address them as soon as possible and whatever video you want the next you can state it down in the comments okay thank you for watching